What's going on, you loyal listeners? Thank you for tuning in to the L Squared Podcast. I'm your host here, Luke Larson, and joining me today, as per the usual, who will be assisting me in leisurely launching you into levity, the old special guest himself, Old Leaks. What's going on? What's up? You're in the new crib. That's right. The first new pod. Place. First pod in the new place. I did buy, I purchased my first home. Congrats. Thank you. Wait a minute. Hey, thank you, guys. No, that's good. Thank you. That's all right. No, please, guys. Seriously, we have a, we have a podcast for you guys want to. Thank you. Yeah, no, it feels, um, I don't know, it, it feels actually great now. I've been here for about, God, it's probably been almost a month now since I moved in, but it yeah. feels good. Yeah, so yeah. today we're going to be talking about, uh, you know, the, the tax rebates you get from being a first yeah. home, uh, first time, you know, home buyer. Yeah. Home buyer and, yeah, there's a know, lot of good benefits. Uh, you know, I found out that the state I, that we currently... I've been taking baby aspirin. Every day. You know, every day. Yeah, yeah, it cuts down on heart attacks. You gotta watch you it. You gotta watch it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> too, too true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it does feel weird to be like, you know, that's one of the pinnacles of being a real adult is like you know buying a you know purchasing a house is kind of it was you know a lot of stress a lot of worry but it's been pretty dope so far and now there's no there's no rules there's no rules you know it's just you i don't have a bedtime yeah that's the main thing it's crazy it's i can just you tell me i can just stay up however late i want do whatever you want i mean that's within that's next level stuff reason. within reason well, one of the things i want to do segues is talk about movies watch movies you know listen to movies while you know while i'm watching them listen to them as well through the audio you know we were going to do so we had talked about a couple different ideas for for the pod today and we thought well in honor of march madness we could do this tournament style bracket well in case you haven't noticed we're done with march now the tournament's over we could have just lied we could have just lied just and said, said you know, that we're in the heat of posting it, it and we're posting it posting after. in april you know what let's yeah. do it. let's do it let's mark the time here and uh okay we're gonna do a clean in on that okay ready and Live so, here from March. From March. Don't <laughs> worry. We're still in the thick of it. We don't know who's going to win. I, if I would bet, you know, Loyola is looking great. You know, they're the, they're the underdog team. I don't see how they cannot win it at this point. You know, yeah. they have that none. Uh, spoiler. Well, not even a spoiler. Well, no. Is there a spoiler? No spoilers. Well, you know what? I might be spoiling this for some people. Okay. Um, maybe this is more of a hot take. Hot take coming at you. Well, they are two different things, but we'll hear so, what you say first. Contrary to what most people think, yep. uh, Sister Jean really. has not actually led to Leola winning any games this year. Wait a I, minute. I don't know. Wait a I don't minute. Know. Wait a minute. I don't know. <laughs> you know what? I just rang the bell. Check the stats. Call me crazy. Re- read the papes, man. Read the papes. You know. I'm just saying it. You're saying I'm that saying she it. provides nothing to the athleticism that's shown on the court? I think she's got nothing to do with it. Well, that is <laughs> certainly a hot take. I think it actually takes away from you know, their accomplishments. In all, in all honesty, we're giving you two hot takes for the price of one, because I agree. I get sick of hearing about it, honestly. I'm like, first of all, who gives a shit? It's just something for the media to talk about. And then, like, for people to come out and be like, for her to have her own press conference is a little bit much. It's a very, uh, it's a very, it works really well in our age. It's like a... For us millennials? A very Twitter-centric kind of storyline that yeah, people absolutely. can follow. It's, you know, they see, like, people who don't follow the tournament can, like, see yep. in, like, their little news thing, like, oh, who's the, what is this? Like, oh, this is cute, Sister Jean. You know, it's like... Yep. So, that's true. That's that's all that's it where is. We are. It's a medium market. Yeah. So. Maybe she's not even a real person. It's all a conspiracy. Yeah. Who knows? We have the facts to back that up. 
But, so, long way around, like we said, we are in the heat of it here in March, not April. We saw on Twitter, was it A24 that, did they tweet this out? I don't know. Was there was some... like a rash of just like people making brackets of everything. Yeah. And, and one... once again, it got like kind of annoying when it started yep. like turning into like, <laughs> so just you know, a, a bracket of like the 86, you know, best Nickelodeon shows. Like, yeah. it's like, okay, this is... I don't think 86 is a proper number to even do a tournament with, but right, you're yeah, right. And but... you're like, how do, you, how do you compare generations of shows? You know, I mean, it's <laughs> tough too. But one that we saw that caught our eye, perennial favorite of the L Squared podcast, as we found out previously, I inadvertently stole their logo. I didn't realize until much later after I'd had it. We haven't had we haven't had to pay for it yet. Right. So. They haven't we luckily we're not successful in the least. <laughs> so they don't care. Uh was A twenty four, the production company, I believe, that we both yes. love. And it seems like for sure the last two years they've had my favorite movie and pretty much a handful of just they're just putting out there is this company that really helps with a lot of independent films and, and do great movies. We, one of our early episodes was we talked about a 24 and like, you know, our love for it and stuff. So now we're doing a bracket of the top. How many is it? 24, 16, 18. I don't even count two, four, six, eight, 16, 16. Yeah. So we're doing our top 16 tournament style bracket. Um, you know, you could even you could even call it the the sweet sixteen. Ooh, that sounds good. <laughs> that, you know, actually, let's stick with top sixteen. It's top sixteen. I, I like that. That's catchy. Top sixteen. Top sixteen just <laughs> rolls right off the tongue. <laughs> yeah. So the top sixteen A twenty four movies ranked just by whatever. We didn't like go through and put an official ranking on them. Right. But for the first round, what we're gonna do, we're gonna discuss them a bit. We talked about what to do. For the first round, we're gonna go every other. So, first one, first matchup, old legs gonna do it. Then it's gonna be me, then old legs, back and forth. And then the next rounds, we're gonna debate. And if we can't come to a conclusion, we're gonna do old school, just flip a coin. Flip a coin, easy. Then it's neither one of our decision. Fair, fair. It's what's fair. It's what's fair. Yeah. I tried to do. It's hard to do a two face impression. I'm realizing now, because you want to do half your face is like down and burnt off but you can't like do yeah. portray that in a voice yeah, you have a full face i can't you, can I never... can't, you can't ever have only you're human, <laughs> you're human. <laughs> you could never be a dinosaur all right so first on the plate i don't We're know if we northwest region so let's uh top of the bracket okay we have is this one me yeah ex I mean... machina versus it comes at night a movie that was released last year? Was it last year? Yes. It was twenty seventeen. Seventeen. Yep. Yep. Um I don't was Ex Machina was twenty fifteen. Yep. I don't know uh what did did it come at night? Did it make it onto your top ten? It did not. Nope. It was in I think it was in both of our honorable mentions. Honorable mention. Honorable mention for sure. And we did talk about it on the pod. Yeah. yeah. Uh it was definitely a movie that uh um I anticipated. I was excited to see. Uh, w- definitely one of like the spookiest trailers that I had seen yeah, in a while. Really great marketing campaign. I, yeah. I really and, and, and the movie itself was um, was rather uncomfortable mm. um, to sit through. Yeah. Uh, it, once you kind of get to the end and you kind of figure out like what it's about, then it's like, oh yeah, okay. But uh, right. um, yeah, it comes at night, uh, starring Joel Edgerton, uh, basically like an Post end, yeah, end of the. Type. I mean, we yeah, we've seen this like a million times. You yeah. know, so something happened. We're not sure what. Yep. Um, the only rules are: don't go outside at night. Yep. Is there because something out there? It, it is out there. The yeah. clown Pennywise. So um, again, you know, I can't really say what I would do in their situation. Um, and also, I, I'm I'm gonna come out here. I'm not a parent, so. I'm not going to talk Confirmed. for other parents, but if I were to make a parenting suggestion, I would say don't take your son along with you to go mercy kill 
his grandfather and then yeah. set him on fire in front of him. Like, that was a I little know, bit rough. You know? And that was like a developing his character moment too. Right, right. Yeah. It was a little bit much. See, I don't know. You if know, I the son son doesn't. I don't think he needs to see that. Right. You could just be like, say. well, you know, grandpa's grandpa's we're, we're kicking out grandpa out to pasture. You yeah. Know? Say say goodbye. Yeah. You know, see, see you around. You know, see you around the trail, crazy cramps. crazy thing happens after those events. Yeah. Son, does some issues sleeping at night. Yeah. You know, things start happening. And I just. You can't help but wonder if there's a correlation between the two. I don't know. Two. You know what? Hey, I'm not going to... It's know, not yours to say. I mean, we're not... Correlation does not mean causation. Okay? Wow. Wow. I'm just put gonna, that on. Somebody put that on a t-shirt, please. Right, yeah. That's, you know, I think cool. I'm... I think I just created that, you know? Yeah. It's like that thing, you know? It's like a... God, I get, like, a headache when I fall asleep with my shoes on. It's like, didn't you get hammered last night? Like, you know? Uh, it's like, oh. You so know, you're saying that when the, we wear shoes, you get headaches. And yeah, that's that that's the cause, the, not, not the being drunk yeah, part. Yeah. So, I don't well, know. Yeah, who's to say? But. Yeah, I think I think I said on the pod, it comes at night. Was like a bit disappointing for me, just that the marketing campaign made it. It marketed a different movie than it really was, and so it got me excited for a movie that we didn't get. Um, so you can't help but be thrown off a bit. But like I said, I think there's like a great movie in there somewhere, but. I'm not sure if it's right on the surface. Ex Machina, on the Ex other Machina hand, is on the other hand a great movie through and through. Alex Garland, yes. yep. who's now proving himself to be a top name sci fi director, mm-hmm. you know, um, one of my favorites this year, Annihilation. Yeah, already we saw that together, and I the first the first act I was kind of like I don't know if this is that good, but it ended really well, and we liked it a lot. But Ex Machina. Your girl, Alish. Alicia Vikander. You know, which, I, I just which don't. Apparently, I just don't see it. Which apparently, guys. I'm, I'm alone now. You know. Yeah, but, you are. Unfortunately. Hey, to all you Vikander heads out there, <laughs> the I heads? saw Tulip Fever this year. Oh wow! <laughs> I've never heard of that movie. All the Vikander fans, they know they they know what I'm talking about. Tulip Fever. All right, let's they hear it for Vikander out. out there. Vikanders. The candor heads. Yeah, there's a lot of them in the studio today. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they abruptly <laughs> stopped. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, Alicia Vikander, uh, Donald, Donald Gleason, um, mm-hmm. and our boy, Oscar Isaac. Yep. This is just a great movie. It just is in its essence. You yeah. Know, it's, it's a, yeah, I, I will say like a, um, it's a very it's a very well thought out trope. Like we, this isn't the first time we've seen, you know, man creates machine machine has issues you know, with thoughts for itself. itself. You know, it's like, this is, we've yeah. been here, you, you know. know, we kind of peaked with iRobot and then it's kind right, of been yeah. downhill from, from there. there. Yeah. E- everything borrows from, from iRobot. iRobot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you can trace everything back. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't get much better than the robot winking back at Will Smith. Yeah, to show those, trust with those sexy robot eyes. Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> but it just goes to prove if you do something well, and it's and this movie's very well executed. I think that you can yeah. revisit some of these things because I don't know, I don't know about you. I'm a sucker for sci-fi in general, and this yep. one, um, I think this one's pretty easy for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it on to the next round. Ex Mach gets it. Ex Machina, and this is. Well, uh, we're gonna mark. I would it say that Ex Machina comes into the game as a, uh, as a, as a, as an eleven point favorite, and they cover the spread. They win by like yeah. fourteen. No, I, so. I, you know, I don't have a say in this one, but I, I agree. I think Ex Machina is just one of those like, what you want out of a sci-fi movie. It just gives you checks all those boxes and more. And the best thing is, I think a sci-fi movie can do is leave you questioning society, you know, and yeah. it definitely did that. So That's then nice. the next round we have that will go on to face Ex Machina is Moonlight versus American Honey. So, you know, American Honey, 
That was 2017 as well, right? Or was it 16? I think it was 16. 16? Okay. Um, Shia Lee both. And not... I, I want to I say one of my very favorite human beings. Um, I'm definitely all in on the, um, on the Shia LaBeouf his career. camp. Uh, so you want to explain the uh, storyline of American Hunter? Uh, well, it's, <laughs> it's funny you should ask me that. I'll just read the synopsis on IMDb. It says, oh, cop out. A, a teenage girl with nothing to lose joins a traveling magazine sales crew and gets caught up in a whirlwind of hard partying, law bending, and young love as she crisscrosses the Midwest with a band of misfits. Oh, is it a band of misfits? Oh, yeah. Well, you know, this, I didn't know anything about this movie. I just saw the trailers, and or the one trailer, and it looked good, decent, you know. I mean, Shia LaBeouf and some chick. Shia LaBeouf with a rat tail. Yeah, I'm in, yeah. Selling magazines, like, whenever he's... It's going to be hard to say no to that. It, it's kind of tough to take him, like, seriously as, like, when you put him in, like, a different era... You know, like the hmm. uh, what was the what was the tank movie that he was in? Fury. It, I Great liked him movie. in that, but it was like it's yeah. hard to like get past like the Shia LaBeouf thing. Um, yeah, it's he, just because he's so like he's his personality is is to the point where it's so strong where it's really hard. I mean, not he's for basically to, we were, we as millennials, he is our savior. You know, I mean, right. he is what. So American what Honey, uh, I thought. I thought for, I thought for a little bit that this was a documentary, <laughs> like that this really? was. That I, I could you see like this just being like his crew that he just like kind of rolls around with, you know? Yeah. And like every once in a while, there's like a news that comes up like, oh, Shia LaBeouf, you know, arrested and so and so. It's like that's yeah. literally what this movie's kind of about. Yeah, just that's kind of, true. You know, around and you know, this movie could have been. It, this movie had. I think this movie has a pocket. Right. right, I think it has a niche that it could have probably sold a little bit better, but I feel like for the right market, this is like a really great movie. And what market am I talking about? I feel like it, it this is kind of weird to say, but I feel like maybe like more white trash type people would kind of enjoy this just because like, it's like a- the, and I'm not, I'm not trying to be mean. There's just not a better word for it, but I'm right. just like, her aspiration, her biggest aspiration in life is just to have her own trailer. That's yeah. it. And, like, that's kind of beautiful. It's, you know, and, like, her, she doesn't like her life. She's with the shitty guy. She's taking care of these kids, whatever. And then she just kind of gets swept away by these, this, you know, obviously intoxicating Shia LaBeouf rolls through town. And you're like, oh, this looks super fun. Let's do this. And then you realize that, well, it's like, well... Obviously, who would have thunk driving around in a van trying to sell magazines door to door wasn't all it cra- was cracked up to be, you know? But um, it's a movie. It's a movie about like kind of uh, poor white America, but it's not. It's not necessarily aimed at that audience. Like the movie's much too like meandering, and it's like yeah, it's, and it's like an, it's like forty five minutes too long for. Yep that crowd so it's a really interesting thing because it's yeah it's it's certainly like a look into that society but it's not for that society right. in my it's opinion it's for us yeah. people with our heads up our ass yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. pretty much yeah but it's very There's, it's really hard not to like come off sounding pretentious oh yeah 100 percent. yeah um but, I, I thought this movie i thought this movie was fine i just thought it was about like 40 minutes too long yeah, it did. It did definitely kind of linger on, and then like the thing you think it's going towards, which you're on board for, it kind of like doesn't really go there, and you're like, uh, okay, and now we're done. So, which I appreciate because I appreciate movies that are just about peop like regular people living yep. their lives, which I think is a pretty good segue because the next movie we're going to talk about is another movie about just people yeah. living their lives. Which we did say, Moonlight. All right, I'm not going to keep you guys waiting. Moonlight wins this. It's just a far superior film. But I feel like we people have talked about Moonlight a lot. We It made our top ten in the year for 2016. And it's, did we talk about it before it won the Oscar? Yep, we, we did. did. We did, yep. yeah. And, uh, you know, it's 
it's I'd I'd like to see it again. Honestly, I've only I only saw it the one time, and I did it in preparation for our top ten <laughs> list, and it it wasn't like in the best setting, but I liked it a lot, and it was like I mean, it's definitely it, this is actually a pretty good matchup because it's definitely it's not um, the same movie as American Honey. Like obviously the 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 two movies are about different things, but they're both like kind of about like a a main character that's kind of uh just like meandering through life not really sure what to do which is like yeah. obviously that's, everyone that's like everyone but so, moonlight does it so but moonlight does it in like a just a nice tight like yep. hour and 25 minutes and the way it's paced the three the act the very good. clear three act structure of him as a child him yes. as a teenager and then him as an adult works seamlessly right and you and that's another thing you should point out too is that all three characters who play um yep. the chiron yeah chiron is they're like none of them are like they're like none of them take away from the performance no i thought anything, which is really hard to do like i don't know how you like <laughs> anything what's his face steals the whole movie he won the oscar i forget his name it's hard to say uh well marshall ali won the supporting Actually, sure. he was the That's yeah, because him and he, Janelle Monae. Yeah, he kind of steals it for me. Yeah, and he doesn't have much screen time, but fucking hell, right. is he good? Yeah, I mean that's like. And Chiron asks him about what he does for a living. Yeah, yeah, that's tough. That's good. That's some man tears. So well, I think this next one, this next matchup, is going to be a tough one for you. I feel like, but so we got Lady Bird versus. Uh, gosh, dang! Another one of my man crushes, <laughs> James Franco and Spring I feel like Breakers. James Franco was like your first love. He was right. like your first man crush, right? And yeah. he's, I think he's probably still up there. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I, like, I don't know if Shy has necessarily surpassed him. But yeah, Shia, I mean, if you had to pick, you know, Shia's if we're probably, doing, if we're, uh, I mean, Shia, I think James Franco is is a much more accomplished uh, actor. Yeah. Uh, but I would. But it'd be really tough. It'd be like, I don't know. Who's I don't know how you would decide like, who's. With? Well, yeah, I, I'm trying to think like who's the better artist. Ooh, you know that's tricky. Which is really, I don't know. Because like, they both how do you have, how do you define artist? Yeah. Though? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They they both have a they definitely both have a vision. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> and true. Either you can be on board with that vision or not, and I don't know. Like I, but can I do, do a really, really quick segue. Yeah, this go ahead. Is off topic. Fuck Mary Kill, James Franco, Shia LaBeouf, and McConaughey for you. Oh, that's a tough one. Wow. And you're saying I can, I can only have sex with one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would assume if you got married, you would probably christen it. That's true. At some point, that's and that's probably true. have multiple ones. So. Um. I think uh, think it would have sex with Shia LaBeouf just once. Yep. And then in and out, clean break. <laughs> yeah, clean break. You know that's probably not the best life choice, but <laughs> we're just gonna leave it at that. We're gonna close that door. You're like experiment. It's like your college years. You know, yeah. You're just trying yep. different stuff. Yep. It's like I'll, I'll, you know, I look back at that and be like, ah, you know, yeah. Well, you had you fun. Know, you know? Yeah, <laughs> but glad nothing came of that. You know, it's like. Wow, really made the right yeah. choice there. Um, then, uh, yeah, uh, Mary Franco, kill McConaughey. Kill McConaughey. That's a tough choice for you. Yeah, I just think about you know like think about those nights on the couch with Franco. It's just like me and him. It's like, oh, Seth's coming over tonight. Oh, nice. <laughs> like you <laughs> married him for his friends. <laughs> That's yeah, great. Seth and Jonah and the. Yeah, you, you got to like, think about the perks. You yeah, know? You know? he's connected to a lot of people, and he's got a lot of degrees. He, I mean, you could probably be on a soap opera with him at some right. point if you just wanted to. Yeah. McConaughey, I feel like that's like having you'd have to be like McConaughey's trophy husband. Yeah. You know, I feel like he has high standards, where I feel like Franco would just think of you as a piece of art and respect you for who you are. Wow. I, I, 
surprisingly, <laughs> yeah. That's sweet. I, I feel I'm like okay with it. Yeah. yeah. Are you good with it? Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm good. good with it too. That's the right answer. All right. Yeah, All right. Figured it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now back to the list. All right. So, Lady Bird of Spring Breakers. Um, Can I say? I don't know if I've said on the pod yet again. But since our top ten of the year, I have seen Lady Bird. And, oh, yeah. Uh, what do you think? Because I hadn't well, seen it at the ahead. time. I loved it. And I, you know. I think I said a couple I things weirdly, I weirdly said on the pod, I don't know why. Look, guys, loyal listeners out there, I am just I just try to tell you my truth, you know. I don't want to f- give you some fake bullshit. I just tell you what I'm thinking, you know, most of the time here. And at the time, I was, I was just kind of like, I feel like this could be just kind of an artsy, artsy like, pastel colored Juno type thing, you know, sure. is kind of what I was feeling. And I was like, I'm probably going to see it. It's probably going to be good, but it was getting a lot of hype. And I don't know. I was kind of like, shy away from yeah, that. like, especially when it gets a lot of hype, you're like, all right, yeah, it's you like, know, that's... dude, you should read that book, uh, Ready Player One. Yeah. Yeah. I heard it's a really good book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's just, I don't know, but I did see it and... I loved it, man. I mean, it was just something where it was like, I went in just expecting to be like, yeah, I'm probably going to be like, yeah, I respect it, and I know it's a good movie, but it just didn't hit me the way it hit everybody else. But I'm not lying, it did. You know, I, the best, I think a lot of people said this, but it was the thing I came away saying was, it was just so relatable. And that's such, she lived such. Weirdly a, relatable. Weirdly relatable, because it's such Cause a different lifestyle yeah. than we live. And, and, it, and again, it wasn't, I you know, I think you can probably uh, say the the same thing. Like I I, I might have said it on the pod that uh, I, it was weird relatable re- weirdly relatable because uh, I related to it. And a I'm not a woman. Right. Like confirmed. Yeah. I mean, we just did a segment. You know, <laughs> <laughs> asking me to oh, you know yeah. have sex with it. You know, but granted, for listeners out there. Uh, not a, no visual format here, but yep, not a woman. Legs. Um, not a woman. I didn't go to a Catholic school, and I grew up in the Midwest. In so. fact, you hate Catholics. I believe we've talked about that on the pod, right? You just despise Catholic people. Well, I am a Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I know that. <laughs> That's why you hate them. So yeah. Um. Yeah. So yeah, no, Lady Bird. Boom. Nothing about spring. The ladybird takes it. it yeah, um, it's the right I mean, movie to move on. I mean, yeah, we can talk a little bit. I mean, Spring Breakers uh, certainly visually arresting. Wait, can um, we say? Can I we think say? It, I think it ahead, has sorry. one of. Well, shoot. No, I, I hope this doesn't open up a can of worms. Like maybe you have thoughts about this, but I, I think it's one of the best performances by a rapper in a movie. The Gucci main part. I have no thoughts. Because this, oh, okay. Because right. I was gonna say, like, this is like pre-jail Gucci Mane. This is like, this is like Guap, like, you know, the East Atlanta Santa Gucci Mane. Like, he probably didn't even know it was a movie when he yeah, was doing it. Like, probably. this is. He was still on. He was still very much on the lean. I think when he uh, shot this. Could and, be. Um, I was gonna. And say, I was just gonna say, I I can think of many many more bad rapper performances that's, true. that's very true every I ti performance yeah uh Wooden. every that guy from uh the black eyed peas oh will i am yeah oh my god yeah. it's like oh when you see will the will i am cameo it's like oh this is gonna but be i feel like what's out. like the peak of that though <laughs> like common is common the best rapper actor there just is? okay yeah you know luda luda <laughs> oh yeah how can i see this is the bar you know the bar. and i, mean, I think they know. really nailed it because like gucci Mane is basically just playing yeah. like like Himself. trap star gucci Mane, yep. you know which is that that works have you ever seen belly mm, I, no but i was gonna say i'd be remiss if i didn't even just mention above the rim tupac tupac is that the bar? I think so. Okay. I was going to say, Belly has a bunch of action. DMX is good in Belly. He's probably the best part. Nas sucks. Method Man's good when he shows up. Yeah. Every once in a while. But 
That did open up a can worms. I was yeah. going to say, it's can we hard say, not to. <laughs> you were right. That was a good call. Uh, between Lady Bird and Spring Break, we could say Lady Bird is like the James Franco, and Spring Breakers is like the Shia LaBeouf. Like, you wouldn't want to marry Shia, uh, the Spring Breakers. Maybe like a one-night stand, but you want to marry Lady Bird. You know? Yeah. You want to have a long-term relationship with Lady Bird. With yeah, there's, there's that, the when the, the kind of psyche, the psychedelic, trippy spring break. Spring break. Spring break forever. You know, it's like, it's like no, no one wants to go on spring break forever. That's where you lose. It's just a week. <laughs> yeah, then you're that's done. That's the best part. And it's over with, you know? So we're, look, so we're, look at all my shit. So we're done with spring break. You know, it's fun, but all right. Good while it lasted. Yeah. But we gotta move on. All right, what's up next? This is gonna be a tough one. Uh, the lobster versus Swiss Army Man. Ooh. So are you gonna choose uh, the movie about pure unadulterated bliss, or just the one that uh, rejects all companionship and is rather depressing? Which, what's it going to be? <laughs> uh, uh, it's tough. Which, yeah. Which one do you want to just throw on? Well, you want me to do either one of them here? I feel like we've talked about both on the pod sure. before. Um, for sure. Like oh. Lobster, Colin Farrell. Yep. Um, another dystopian, very dystopian future. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, I don't know. We... We could be headed that way. <laughs> and it, it hit you and I in the sweet spot, Ooh. for sure. I, I mean, it hit us in the right place. If you're in a weird mood... Oh, that's, that's the one for you. Yeah, that's it's, the one for uh, you. Yeah, if you're in a weird mood, if you're kind of like... If you just got out of a relationship and, you're, and, you're, and you're not really <laughs> sure, you're like... Yeah. You're like, God, is this like... Is this... Is, am I really doing the right thing? Like, yeah. is it's, this for me? Like, go check out The Lobster. Yeah. Or if you've been, like, single for a long time, and you're kind of like, what is the point? Yeah. It's a good one for that, too. What am? What animal... So, we'll just leave it, leave it at this. What yeah. animal would you pick? You know, they kind of... They kind of say this in the movie. I mean, they do explain why there are a lot of dogs in the universe. Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I'm going to say. Like, who wouldn't want to be a dog? I mean, to live as a dog, that's a that's a really good life. Like, if you get in a good home, and you can just, like, take naps and just be loved and be happy all the time. Can I make my case for cats, though? And this is a, this is a total, like, this this is probably, like, a personality thing. But, so, okay, so, yeah. the, the two here. probably, like, most picked animals, if you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to, you know, instead of... You know, well, there's no one at the hotel for me, so I'm just going to become a fucking, you know, whatever. You know, cats yeah. and dogs are probably the top yeah. choices. Um, so dogs. Dogs, historically, throughout time, have jobs. Dogs have to listen to commands. Dogs have to do dumb shit to, like, get fed. Yeah. Cats, none of that. Just do whatever they want. Have you ever, have you ever like, walked a cat? No. Have you ever cat, like, sit? cat like no <laughs> hey cat don't yeah. break that yeah hey cat get out of here you know yeah, they don't nothing and we worship cats we dad <laughs> and they run them. and they own the internet that's true like you people think that like amazon or google or you know no, facebook no it's cats trust me how the fuck did they do that yeah they're incredibly smart they they at a very early time they're like no they just got together. They're like, all the cast are like, we aren't doing any fucking jobs, okay? See those mutts out there? Yeah. Pulling sleds? Going going to find idiots that got lost skiing? Like, no, yeah. none of that. The dogs are all... Just gonna chill. Howdy ho, neighborino. Yeah. <laughs> They're just there to help. Yeah. So Man, that's... I'm you just make saying. a very compelling yeah. argument. I don't know. And that's the thing. Like, I don't know. If you want, like, but, you know, like, like structure I've, and want to, like, do things with your life, maybe choose dog. But, but if but you just want to chill, like... The argument you leave out, though, is, like, I feel like if you're a dog, like, you give love and you receive love. Cats, there are probably people who love cats out there, but, like, cats don't give any love. They don't love anything, right? Yeah. They're just... And so, like you said, it comes down to personality. Yeah. I don't want to be a fucking bird. 
It wants to be a bird. Unless you're like an eagle, like I guess. Beak. Like with a beak and then <laughs> just elongated. It's, yeah. You know, maybe like an eagle, but then you can like alone a lot or something. Yeah. Maybe a it's bear. A eagle, if you could be like a bear, I'd be a bear though. You could hibernate and yeah, eat so fish and like shit. Really, mom eats you if you aren't good. Yeah, but that's like what I'm dealing with now anyway. Yeah. But anyways. Uh, yeah. Wow. So I think the lobster, like for me, it's a it's a weird movie and it 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 puts you in a weird mood. Even you know you should probably be in a weird mood if you're gonna watch it. Um. And I, it's one that has made me think more than a lot of movies I've probably ever seen. But Swiss Army Man was my favorite movie of 2016, and uh, I love it. I love it Pure a lot. Bliss, unadulterated yeah. joy. Bliss. And the thing that hit me hard was like the. Well, the soundtrack is amazing. It's very interesting, right. unique. It's a movie about and a very sad person, but yeah, depressed, experiencing and lonely joy. And experiencing joy. For the first time in which we don't yeah. really know. And, like, know? by letting, realizing that you have to, like, open yourself up and let people in. And you can't just, like, you can't just live in this little fantasy, you know, this world of your own inside your own sh- bullshit. Because you can't, like, interact with people like that. And, you know, it's like, I don't know. It had a lot of big ideas. And right. I think it's, it's definitely a roller coaster. Yeah, and it's, and I think uh, it's moving on. To round it two. is moving on. So this next one. Oh, this one's me. Yeah, uh, I got the room showdown. Room v room. Oh, 2018. Right. What room is better? All right. So, so for our next one, we have green room up against room. Not the room. Just room. room. Just room. Yeah. So green room. I don't know if a lot of people saw it. Uh, um. It, I always get it. I always get it mixed up. And rest in peace. Um, I get it mixed up with the baseball player for, I think the Brewers. Is it Anton Yelich or Christian Yelich? This in green room is yes. Anton Yelching. 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 Okay, like I said, I, I get, I get him and the baseball player confused, and it's, that's my bad. But, yeah, like you said, rip. Yeah, uh, so yeah, he passed away, he's the main character of this, uh, about a move, about a kind of, I would say, like, struggling, uh... Punk band? Yes, punk slash screamo. Yeah, I feel like they're, like, they're kind of, they're kind of into some weird stuff. Yeah. I would say. Uh, stumble upon a, uh, um... It's like modern punk, you know? Yeah. Like, I feel like... Modern punk and a modern kind of underground white supremacy white supremacist theme bar. anthems, yeah. Yeah. Um, so they witness a murder and uh, um, hijinks ensue. Yeah, hijinks <laughs> ensue. Uh, who would have thunk it? Patrick Stewart. At the ripe age of, I think, I, he's got to be over 80, isn't he? Yeah, he's got to be. Well, and this was no, only just a couple I bet years ago, not. wasn't it? Yeah, it was in 2016 or 15. Because I would like to see, because, I mean, it he was, is... I believe it was wide release in 2016. Okay. But... So... I'm gonna I'm, I'm saying over 80, but... Either way, Patrick Stewart, holy cow. Yeah. Like, for as much, like, just, like, sheer, like, dread he conveys... Towards it's unsettling everyone, like kind of, and he is like his ability to kind of, I don't know. You haven't really. That's just a gear you didn't know that he yeah. had. Unless you're gonna count, like you know, no, we're the not board gonna. version of Patrick yeah, Stewart from that uh, doesn't count. First contact for any list. <laughs> <laughs> Resistance is futile. <laughs> Jesus Christ. But he's still really charming, yeah. and you can see how he can be a leader and how these people look up to him because like if he came to you with some like radical ideas you might listen to him so he was born in 1940 so let's do some math here oh i definitely got it 78 yeah so he was so he was 76 when they made this 75. Yeah. And, uh, 
He died on set of uh, Wolverine. Yeah. Uh, true story. <laughs> Rest in peace. Stay. Another rip. Well, yeah. Gone too soon. Yeah. So. Yeah, uh, it does. You know, I did finally. I did finally see this movie just like okay. a week ago, or two. So this uh, this slots recent. into that like kind of unnamed category we have of movies we that do. are super uncomfortable to watch or recommend to people that you aren't like super like yeah be like oh dude this awesome movie about these like these like crazy neo Nazis and they just. Yeah cut these like teenagers up and it's, it's really super brutal and realistic and yeah it's like dude i was really into it like yeah. you, you don't really want to like like or the lobster is another one yeah the lobster yeah. is like oh this is this great movie it's like about it's relationships like, yeah it's like and... companionship it might just be like a lot <laughs> no like i'm just telling i'm talking about the whole thing yeah, just, just like, everything i feel like it's just you know? it's all gross fucked. yeah <laughs> no, fucked. yeah so it's like one of those like kind of movies uh We've had a bunch in there now. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Cesario. I, 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 that, yeah. I thought that was. We got a couple prisoners. Com- oh. Uncomfortable. Same director. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Denis. Yeah, sure. Denis. Yeah, those are two big ones. Uh, I feel like. Yeah. So yeah, there's just a lot on that list, but, but that against Room. Room was like an Oscar darling. It was. Won Brie Larson the Oscar, you know. My, well deserved, my cousin. I thought. Yeah. No, absolutely. There was no other. That was 2014, I think. Right. Room. I believe so. Yeah. And that was the year where it was stacked for best actor, and I don't think we've had a year with that many great best actors. And like Jake Gyllenhaal didn't even get nominated that year for for Nightcrawler. Didn't even get nominated that year. But. She was the clear favorite in that year. I remember that. It was like, right. yeah, obviously she's gonna win it. And she that did. was like a that was like a non Meryl Streep year, so right. you know you can pretty yeah. much just. That's I it. mean, I'm sure she was nominated, but they were just into like, the woods. I believe. Like, I bet it. she was nominated for Into the Woods that year. I fucking bet. You don't have to look it up. I know <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's actually look it true. <laughs> yeah. Who who's gonna say you're wrong? Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, room. Uh, yeah. By this point. Um, it was a much better film. Well, it, not to say that it was a bad film, but it was a really cool film to just like watch, not knowing like a single thing about. Um, which I think, like in the moment, like a lot of people kind of saw it that way. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know what it was. I just knew oh, Brie Larson's in this movie, and it's, yeah, same. I didn't know anything. So um, I got sick of hearing Jacob Tremblay after that. I feel like I heard his name constantly. Right. They're yeah. just like that was the kid <laughs> actor. They yeah. would not stop saying his name, just like. Trying to be like, well, we have this movie coming up with a kid. Oh, Jacob Tremblay. Oh, well, Jacob Tremblay. And, like, I heard his name so many fucking times that it, I, yeah. it pissed me off. I'm sick of it. Yeah. Still. So, um, this so. is a really good time test, too, because this is one of, probably one of the older movies on this uh, list. And That's uh, an interesting point, but, yeah. Any fan of the show knows that one of my uh, favorite traits in a movie is, can I remember anything about it? It's a big deciding factor. And, uh, Room... The, the uh, the scene where he he sees the sky for the first time. I remember that scene. That was a good scene. <laughs> Did your throat swell up. Yeah, yeah, that was good. It was powerful. And I also like the movie that it wasn't just about getting out of the the stupid room. You know, it was yeah. like what what happens after. Yeah. You know, which was like, cool. That's what I love about Castaway too. Even though the trailers ruined that. Apparently, I was too young for that. But that's what I love about Castaway. It's not just like. It, yeah, it's I mean, actually. I guess spoiler alert, but at the end of it, you know, when he gets off and he tries to yeah. re-enter his life, it's, it's actually about Tom Hanks in a volleyball. Right, that's it. He's <laughs> that's in it. it. He's <laughs> in the gym the whole time. So, uh, so oh, can I say another thing about Green sure. Room? Before yep. I forgot to say, I love the director of Green Room. He did Blue Ruin before mm, that. Yeah, and that one actor, the main character in Blue Ruin, and then he was like one of the head. He was Nazis. like the guy the kind of nervous guy or yep. whatever yeah, yep. yeah i know what you're talking about he's i got love one him. of those uh he's a good uh um oh that guy yep. like, yeah like he's got that recognizable face yeah. but blue ruin is great i think i probably like blue ruin more than green room but blue ruin is less interesting and less compelling i guess but it's just a little more i don't know realistic but green room has a great ending too i love the ending of green room I loved it. I, I really like, I appreciate movies and they, they don't come around all that often. I appreciate, you know, it's basically the, the polar opposite of a movie like like American Honey. Like Green Room is, is just 
pedal full throttle the yeah. entire way. It really is. Like, by the time they... It starts, like, them doing a shitty gig, and then... I think, like, the most... I think the, the to... slowest, like, moment of that movie is them, like, siphoning gas out of someone else's, like, gas right. tank. And then, yeah. And then from there on out, it is yeah. pandemonium. And you don't really get to breathe. Yeah. So... But... I appreciate that. Oh, uh, I sorry. I just I know I'm gonna forget this. I swear keep, to God, <laughs> keep you don't let you me. Off. If you don't <laughs> let me pick the freaking winner of this <laughs> before I forget, uh, what he does, what the director does in Blue Room and Green Room, just little like the way people, the way characters make decisions and how they act under stress, um, just seems so. Like I've heard some people say, like I think Chris Stockman, who's my favorite movie reviewer he's on youtube he has been for years uh he said like calls his director said something like characters make bad decisions or something but i actually love the decisions these characters make i think they feel super realistic and the way they act under these situations just feels so real like on a different level that i really appreciate honestly and if it comes off as stupid to me it feels like no, that feels that makes it feel real. It doesn't feel like a movie, you know, to me. Yeah, but. There, there's no like, you know, let's let's run down into the basement, you know. Yeah. Like, no, there's nothing like that. And like when they get trapped in the room in green room, you know, they're not just like, all right, let's just go in there and shoot them. They're like, no, wait, okay, yeah. hold on. Let's it takes them like quite a while to figure out. They're like, no, out. let's just like, I don't want to go out there. They're yeah. gonna kill us if we go out <laughs> they're there. They're gonna kill us. That seems like a bad idea, yeah. you know. And there's not. And it's kind of like a. It's a series of, like, you know, what's, like, what's the best bad decision? Yeah. You know, and a bad situation. Later on, I just remember this, when, like, he tries to tell the, the the paintball gun story. But then he, like, yells that thing and jumps down that, that hole. And then the, the Nazi guy's like, dude, clearly that's a trap. He's like, yeah, obviously, but what, are you going to go out there and tell him we didn't get him? You know? <laughs> are you going to go tell fucking Nazi... Uh, Patrick Stewart that we didn't yeah. fuck that we came in here with a gun with two guns to these unarmed fuckers and we didn't come out with them he's like obviously it's a trap but I'm fucking gonna go down there anyway yeah. and it was and he did and I really appreciate that you know just like little shit like that it's like I don't know it sets it apart anyway now you can make your decision room alright so that being said room's a better movie it really is um, there's no getting around it. You just, you know. Now this, god damn it! What do, all right. This uh, is like the toughest let's one. Let's this one out. This is <laughs> the toughest one so far. Fuck. It's the witch. First, enemy. Enemy. This enemy. Uh, this one's kind of sneakily high on your uh, Denis list, isn't it? Yeah. I think it gets kind of. I think it tends to get a little bit lost in the in the shuffle. Then also like the kind of fact that it's like it's like oh yeah it's that one movie with Jake Gyllenhaal but then you kind of like you're not you can't really like really put a finger on like what it's about. It's like well he's got he's like there's a there's a guy he's got like a twin looks like him and and there's like there's like spiders in it. Yeah yeah it's like I think we we talked about this when we did our two-part deep dive series i think yep. that was one of the movies i wanted us mm-hmm. to watch and uh so we kind of analyzed it a bit but it um we've talked about the witch a lot on this podcast and you know spoiler alert big favorite we're gonna talk about it again <laughs> uh it's great but we'll hold on for a second enemy is i mean jake gyllenhaal is my favorite working actor i can think i can say that I'm asking myself. Yes, you can. Okay, great. And Denis Villeneuve is my favorite working director. Now that sounds like a pleb basic thing to say, but I've been saying that for years. I think we, at least I, I don't know. Um, and so to put them together in a small, compact, psychological thriller, like, yeah, you're going to check a, a lot of boxes for me. An enemy is just, it's not big. It's not trying to be big. And it just, like... It's just, it's a beautiful, kind of rounded, interesting movie that you really, like, get into, and then, like, the, especially the end of it, you're like, wait, what the fuck? 
and you kind of step back and really analyze it like we did, which obviously I appreciate. The Witch um, has, you know, one of the best on-screen villains of all time. Yeah. Very short amount of screen time, but just it was Black Phillip. We talked about him a lot. He's a fucking superstar, but. I mean, The Witch was just... The thing I loved about The Witch was that it was just so... Like it said, it, it was a it was a medieval or a New England folktale, yeah. horror folktale, about what fucking happens when you, when you fuck with a witch. And, like, and it, it felt... They really did their homework. Oh, that like, dialogue was so hard to understand. Yeah, if it wasn't, you know... If it wasn't true to that time period, then, you know... I couldn't tell, yeah. you know, because it sure is shit for, you know, like a layman, you know, casual yeah. history guy. Like, I'm like, yep, yep they that's nailed it. exactly what it was like. Yeah. yeah. And, like, we've talked about it before, too, but they leave the town because the town isn't religious enough. It's a great. <laughs> just like, yeah. hey, I'm not dealing with this shit anymore. Yeah. And they go out into the woods and then hijinks ensue. Yeah. You know, babies are getting stolen, crows are pecking nipples off. It's just a hell of a good time. And the thing is that it's it's like one more uh so not to not to keep uh harping. Not not to keep harping on our uh on our our uh, movie parents, but again, going back to the the parenting mm, idea. That could be a whole show. Uh, putting Making your forcing your kids to sleep out in the goat shed. Yeah, I don't know. That's not. You're not gonna win. I don't know. Like you're is, not gonna win is, a lot of favors. Is that the right move? You know, it didn't feel kids goats, right to me. Eh. You know, child. I think child services wasn't around back then. So, but well, you know, yeah, yeah. Again. I wouldn't just, have done this it, is one guy's this is hey, one guy's opinion. Yeah. You know, you know what? <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you how to parent. It's your kid. life, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta fuck your kids up. That's up to you. <laughs> Plus you like see a baby penis. Um, which if you're into that, you know, good for you. Uh you, they have it for you. And the witch eats the baby, you know? So I mean it's very realistic. It's not just like, oh, I ate your baby in some and then ba da ba ba da ba it's uh it's disturbing. And, uh, that, that's like the, uh, that's in like the first like 15 minutes of the movie too. That's like yeah. the credits are still like rolling too. It's like, you, like, you, you, you suddenly you're like, wow, anything can happen. This movie, yeah. they just ate the baby, you're you like, know, we, it's like, we in this bitch, you know, merci. I remember the, the mom said mercy a lot. Yeah. Merci. Yeah. Merci. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And then the, when the boy he wakes when, up. Oh, whew. I don't even like to talk about that part. Cause that was really disturbing. Yeah. And like I've told you, I think I said on the pot, I bought the Blu-ray, and I never opened it. Yeah. And then, uh, so for fans of the pod, as you know, Luke moved, and I tried to, I tried to prank him. I, I was aware that he hadn't opened. Uh, the Blu-ray of the witch, and so me being the a little devious, yeah, I tried opening it, but you came barreling down the stairs too, too quick. So for what the going on? I tried to open it. I was gonna slide it back in there and just see how long it so took that, before you realized. When I looked that it at was... it, I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> yeah. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. Right. Well, but the best the witch sense. story is when we saw that you were like, "Can you tell?" I don't know if we've told... I'm sure we've told on the pod, but can we tell it again because it's a great story? About Demon Girl. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I literally, like, I've grown up with my life with a, a Black Phillip figure in my life. And what if, And so how did this goat come into your life? Uh, origins unknown. Yeah. Showed up, tied up in our barn. It gave birth <laughs> to a, a, a demon spawn a couple days later. <laughs> And it, yeah, it's been like it. It's been like children in the corn ever since. Yeah. You know, I've just been waiting to come back, and you know, Black Phillip's gonna be sitting at the dinner table and cutting me a what, deal. What dost thou? 
What? <laughs> Talking Blackfoot was pretty good. That yeah, and that his was... lips didn't move. It was all in the eyes. Yeah. And it was you know when she's like Black Philip, <laughs> she's trying to talk to him. I don't think and I've ever. Like... And that was another thing too that we were in theaters, but I don't think I've ever in a million years wanted less to see like the face of <laughs> the, the devil <laughs> yeah, I like know. i was like please, please do don't. not like and they didn't and that's after like the third or fourth like uh cut you to think, black where you're like oh, oh, it's, oh it's thank over. god it's the, oh <laughs> shit and it comes back up and you're like please <laughs> god damn it for the love of Pete. yeah, yeah. Um, and guys that's not a that's not a bit that's real life that demon goat yep that's 100 percent real it, yep. Had and it. so when he saw when he saw that black goat, <laughs> he said, "That's trouble." Uh, yeah. We know. We all. Yeah. Know. It actually kind of spoiled the movie for me. I kind of forgot. You're like, about I it. know like, how this yeah. story goes. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, so, obviously that's the devil. Obviously. Duh, like. <laughs> <laughs> we all know that. So. so fuck, I still have to make a decision on this. You know, I really want to move enemy on, but I got to go with my heart, and my heart says the witch. So. Your heart's with Black Phillip. It's a witch. Burn the witch. We shall. Move on. So the next one, I'm glad. I'm glad I'm not on this one. This would be a hard one for me, but it's on you. So we got. Oops. <laughs> end of tour. Do you want to do a clean in on that again? Yeah. And, so we got, and go. So next up on the list, we have a movie called. End of Tour, starring the great Jason Segel, along and with uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. Yeah. Or Lex Luthor. Yeah, oh, I, I, yeah Lex Luthor. <laughs> um, if there's, a, if there's a, a film that uh, calls for a character to kind of just like act, act, act like he's, had a, he, he's, on a, he's on a higher dose of Adderall, and uh, he's actually kind of smart, um, but he's a little bit lovable at the end. Uh, this, yeah, so... That was pretty good. I mean, <laughs> oh, I yeah, no. thank you guys. No, I mean, that was, that was very good. Very um, good fans loved it. Yeah, in a tour. This is a movie that you recommended to me, yep. and uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it's a the Jason Siegel's character. Uh, what the guy's name? He wrote Infinite Jest. David Foster Wallace. David Foster Wallace. So it's like the kind of. It, it's not the. It's kind of just a re. I, I like the. I really appreciate the fact that it's not like a, like a whirlwind of his life, of his entire life, mm-hmm. and it's not the movie doesn't take place even in like a really like, like an in particular like like important phase of his life, because um, yeah, it, it's just about like the this interview that it's just happens with him yeah. and, you know. You take it for what it is, mm-hmm. and yeah, it, I, I don't know. It, it's just a really a very well done movie. A uh, bit of a downer, but yeah, I mean, obviously, like the, I think, just I mean, the subject matter. Yeah, it's just um, it's pretty heavy, I think. And when I recommended it to you, I think it was because I was afterwards. I was it kind of sent me spiraling. I was in a mood, you know, and I was like, I just had to tell you about it, but. It is, you know, it's one of those you kind of have to be ready for. It's a little bit, uh, it sneaks up on you. It's a little bit emotional. And uh, it didn't make me cry. I'm still on my streak, if you guys are counting. It's going to be three years coming up in a couple months. I haven't cried. Inside Out was the last one. Me too. Baby Boss got me. Not not just movies, just in general. What? What Baby Boss got me. Boss Baby. All right, that's all. That's all the time. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us here. Yeah. No, the end of the tour. If you guys haven't seen it, it's great. And like you said, you know, the only thing to be wary of is that it. Yeah, it'll sneak up on you, but just throw it on and you'll fucking have a good time. You know, I think you and I just love conversational movies in general. Right. So like, yeah. this is definitely that. It earns. Uh, it earns the like the privilege to. Um, to discuss kind of like the subject matter and yeah and there's like there's a lot to it and i obviously yeah all the performances are great pretty well that's another jason siegel i think oscar worthy in this one i'm surprised but like 
who knew he had that gear either you know right. I mean it was like fuck man yeah but next one on the list good time good time which spoiler alert was if you haven't listened to our top 10 of the year was my favorite movie of last year so I'm a little bit biased good time but is I love uh, both of these so uh I don't know maybe we should kind of like trace back the origins of like the the synthy neon trailer you know like what was the first one you know it's true ever for any movie well that's the thing like it you know it may be more than just a quick segment in the 80s i don't know the name i've never seen it but now i want to that really narrows it down here uh 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 starring young um daniel day lewis and it's a british indie movie and Han, it was one of Hans Zimmer's first movies that he scored. Hmm. And um, Daniel Day Lewis like some punk. And it's, well, Daniel Day Lewis has done like six movies, so right. So we should know. be able to find it pretty easily. <laughs> but yeah, it's like I haven't ever seen it, but I've only synth. heard there's synth and there's neon and it takes place in the eighties. Well, I'm pretty sure it's made in the eighties. I'm pretty sure there's fucking synth in it. I'm pretty sure. And if there's not, I'm gonna feel bad that I hyped it up. But I'm pretty sure it does. I don't know. My beautiful laundrette, and I bet that's it. It's gotta be. That's it. <laughs> My beautiful laundrette by Stephen Frears. Who the fuck knows? You know okay. who that is. But so you're saying that's it? My beautiful laundrette. I'm pretty sure. I mean, that looks like neon to me, and it's in '85. So you're telling me there's not synth in that soundtrack? Be hard pressed to tell me otherwise. Well, anyway, you and I should find that movie and watch. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'd be down. Um, yeah, so this kind of follows in like the footsteps, or at least like the marketing campaign, like this mold of, I would say like a modern example. Uh, you know, not to. That was a very good pull. Good pull. Thank you. You know, um, maybe maybe try doing a little <laughs> research before, before we yeah. sit down for this podcast. Let's call him the kettle black. Please. Right there. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> If someone could do less if research you could, than you, I if mean, you could just like wow. you know be professional here, come <laughs> on, please for once. I would say that like the modern origin would probably be just like this, like uh, I guess Drive is the easy one. Yeah, the, and because Drive was actually a commercial success in the zeitgeist. Yeah. yeah, and so now these movies, they're like, well, like let's let's make it look like Drive, you know, because that worked yeah. like both. You know, it made money and it was Very, really good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's there's a lot of synth, there's a lot of neon, and this movie guys, is, those aren't bad things. In case you're taking notes out there. Right. Yeah, we do really appreciate these <laughs> things uh, very much. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen a bad one yet. Yeah, that's um, true. But uh, yeah, it's it's basically just kind of like. Uh, it's a movie yep. about two brothers. Robert Pattinson stars in it. Uh, the great Robert Pattinson, who I've really he's grown earned, a liking to. He's earned your respect. Uh, yeah. So anyone that's like still doing like Twilight jokes, it's like, come on, let's date. It's it. like let's let's go. Let's try let's... some water for elephants jokes instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, fair criticism. See? Yeah. That's better. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically just kind of one folly ensues after another, after another, after another. Um, a bank heist goes wrong. Um, and then uh, Robert Pattinson's brother goes to jail. Uh, Robert Pattinson loves just, his brother. He's like, got to get him out. Yep. And so and chaos ensues. Yeah, and it's not like your big budget typical like big heist type movie, but there's heist elements and... I think one of the reasons I love this movie, and you know, it, I'm I'm willing to be open to this possibility that I loved it because I knew less than zero about this movie, and I don't mean I'm Robert Downey doing Jr. sucking some guy's dick in a bathroom for drugs. Less, less than zero is a movie. Let me yeah. get that. So that's a bad reference, but okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and a clean in. Uh, yeah. So I I remember just looking for a movie to see that weekend. And on the listing, oh, and if you guys don't know, we live in a part of the country that is doesn't have the privilege of getting 
brand all these indie movies, you know. Like a lot of these A24s will come to town for one weekend, you know, and then they're gone. And so if you don't catch it while it's here, you're not going to see yeah. it. And this was you're one a fan where... of Kevin Hart movies though. Oh, this you're is in this luck. is the place. <laughs> That's all that we play here. Uh, yeah, but this was one where I was looking at the movies to see and I was like it just said good time, didn't have a poster. And I was like I don't know what that is. I've never heard of that, but I'm just going to go see it. And I did. And I was just blown away. And I just love... Today's day and age, it's just so rare, to, especially for us being fans of movies, you kind of know what's coming out, and you kind of build up like an expectation for shit. But this was like, I had zero idea anything about it, and I just went in, and I fucking had a blast. And I, I loved agree. it, you know? I also think, too, that... Uh, um one of the big reveals in the movie, like, I mean, we watch, you and I combined, we watch a lot of movies, yep. and so it's very rare that, like, anything, like, truly, like, and not, this isn't to, like, sound pretentious again, like, I'm so, like, I, like, such a higher level of movie watching. I feel like I if we coming. wrote a book, it'd be called Not to Sound Pretentious, yeah, but. <laughs> but we're actually <laughs> we're, sounding pretty pretentious But right we now. sometimes make Darren Aronofsky sound humble. Yeah, yeah. so, so. I was genuinely surprised at one of the reveals in this movie, We're and it spoil completely it. blindsided me without spoiling. And uh, I'll just I'll just leave it at that because yeah, same. I think I can think of because two... from that point on, you're like it, it's once again it's like you know like wow the witch just ate the baby. It's like anything can happen in this movie. Yep, you're like yeah. oh well, this is taking a turn. Yeah, when that. Uh, I can think of that moment, and there's another moment where something happens, and I want to spoil it, but my mouth literally went agape, and I was like, whoa, yikes, and you're like, holy fucking shit, and Robert Pattinson, not a good dude, you know, not really a, not a redeemable yeah, not character. not in this movie, no. not in real life, no, not in Twilight <laughs> movies, not at all. Yeah. Definitely not in Water for Elephants. Yeah, he's a fucking <laughs> asshole. <laughs> yeah, it's just, and it's, you know, that type of movie that I like when it's just one guy from his perspective, like, pretty much the whole time. And he just, it's just him against the elements. And there's, and I feel like there's barely any exposition in this movie, yeah. which I love, too. So, and with that, you got a pick. Good time. Wow, I'm kind of surprised. I wasn't. The, I the really synth, didn't know. The synth rules out, man. Okay. Last wow. one, first round. Last one, the first round. It's up to me. It's the sake, killing of a sacred deer, versus under the skin. It's a couple of slow burns. Yes. <laughs> very much. Under the skin was also 2014. Okay. So I guess that must be the oldest. You're much one. better with uh, years. Uh, years yeah. And- Remembering, I've, I've realized a lot of people things struggle that happen. with things that happen. That's In one of movies. my. I do put that on my resume. I do remember a couple of things from Under the Skin, though. So yeah, yeah. But she's actually black. She's Ooh. actually like a. This is like a. It's like Annihilation. It's like the prequel. Yeah. Whoa. Did I just make a fact? Womp 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 womp. <laughs> uh, yeah, the killing of a sacred deer. Same director as a lobster, uh, similar theme. Other than uh, you know, the lobster at least had you thinking and had you really question companionship, like you said. And uh, I think the killing of a sacred deer was just like really hard to watch, and uh, just uh, <laughs> it didn't have um, much else to give it. I guess. Like, I mean. I think it makes a bit of a difference if you're told going in that it's a dark comedy. Like, if you really want to just, like, sit there and just, like, kind of grit your teeth through the whole thing, it's really tough, like you yeah. said. Um, but it can be it can be kind of, a, like, I was both kind of, like, shocked and I found it a bit funny. Um, you know, like, the spinning shotgun scene. Like, I thought that was kind of funny. Like... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's up there with uh, another baby eating scene when Jennifer Lawrence has her yeah. baby eating and mother. I mean, maybe the best baby eating scene of all time. Yeah, I don't know. You know, <laughs> that's another you know another can of worms. Yeah, we don't want, we don't want to get. I don't want to get like go too deep into it. The but... spinning shotgun scene reminds me of Dawn of the Planet of the Apes, which also came out in 2014 when the they have that shot on the back of the top of the tank when it's spinning around when Koba takes it over. Do you remember okay. that? Sure. Yeah. Remember that? I mean, you know. Apes follow Koba now. <laughs> I mean, Koba, Koba wasn't version. pointing the yeah. the tank at his family members, but you know, whatever. <laughs> Same difference. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, under the skin, ScarJo. I think under the skin's super underrated. Even though it's kind of gotten that stench of being an quote end quote underrated movie, I think it still is really great sci fi film. Um, and you know, I had watched this one night when I think I got off early on a Friday and I'd come home and I think, so a little tidbit for you listeners, I hope, I hope we don't lose any by me saying this, but I have been known to enjoy, you know, smoking a cigar every once in a while, you know, every couple months and celebratory thing, I will enjoy one. I'm sorry. I know that's controversial, but I had one left over from, I think it was, our mutual friend, Tyler Beck, uh, his bachelor party, shout out, Burdette Dog on YouTube if you're out there, um, and so this was a while ago, but he had one left over, and from his party, because we bought a bunch, whatever, there's a point to the story, anyway, so I got off early on Friday night, I was like, I'm just going to smoke this by myself, just because I have it, whatever, it's a Friday night, I'm just going to chill out, so I went outside and I start smoking it and I'm just having a gay old time outside smoking a cigar well the thing about cigars is that you know if you're not careful they can give you an old boot to the to the balls you know like they can really sneak up on you and the best part the best way to enjoy them is if you're with other people so that you can take your time you can you can puff on it you can talk you can breathe actual I'm air just you the, i'm just you're just I'm giving you the green light i'm clearing yeah. out I'm <laughs> and clearing uh out. this is you, this you is all me here. I'm, like, I'm i'm taking it home here yeah. and you know but i wasn't with other people's by myself and i didn't have like a seat outside so i'm just kind of standing around sort of pacing and just i still was enjoying it but then i came back inside and all of a sudden brrr, like you, the room starts spinning and then all of a sudden you you get a bad gut ache and you're like oh fuck like did you go to the sunken place pretty much yeah and then I was I was like for some reason and then your heart starts racing really fast and I like thought I'm just gonna down like a beer or two now that'll help <laughs> like drank two beers as fast as I could and uh, it didn't help. Uh, made my stomach feel worse, you know, and then I ate something, you know, I thought that would help, and it didn't really help, but I started watching Under the Skin, and <laughs> <laughs> just, like, put it on as I'm dealing with all this shit, and, like, it's starting, and I'm like, Bleh, I don't want to ruin this movie, you know, I'm like, Bleh. well, then, and I, like, paused it, I was like, no, I'm just gonna puke, so I can get this out of me, and I'll be fine, and I'll come back, so I go to the bathroom, I'm trying to puke, and I can't. I'm just dry heaving, dry heaving, can't get anything out. I'm like, you know, you lie to yourself. You think, maybe I'm feeling a little bit better. I go lay down, start under the skin again, and it didn't help. And then I get about a quarter of the way through. I pause it. I get up, and I just blow chunks in the bathroom, puke it all out, and I feel great. And I come back, and I watch the movie, and I loved it, and I went to bed. Yeah, it was a pretty good night. There you go. You know? Yeah, what'd so, you what'd you think of the movie? <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, for me going through all that pain and that suffering, um, I really liked it. I loved the creepiness of it. I loved the mystery. I really loved the visual storytelling. This movie does a great job of visually just. I think there literally zero exposition. I don't think it explains anything. You're literally just like just taking it in as did, her character yeah. was and did, your, uh, did like the trials and tribulations that you went through mm -hmm. did that like help you appreciate like 
like it's like wow i just had this like really bad stomach ache like did you did it help you appreciate more like like wow like it would it would be so hard to eat another human being you know yeah no yeah 100%. you really appreciate it after that i was like like, wow. like i don't I, know if i could do that i know we're experiencing the same thing right now yeah yeah, yeah. definitely so who wins <laughs> <laughs> i'm going with under the skin after that whole oh. story all right. I've held on to that story for a long time. I don't know if I've told anyone that, but oh, you just now we all the know the entire world. The entire world knows. <laughs> well, that that caps off our first round. So now we get to debate the easy part. The easy part. Now we got to debate these and try and pick uh, winners and coin flips and shit. So back up to the western bracket here. Northwest is Ex Machina versus Moonlight. Mm. That's a tough one. Do you, I mean, we've already talked about them, so we don't have to go in depth, but do you know right off the bat who you'd pick? Hmm. You know what? I think since uh, this is our podcast yep. and we we can kind of make up the rules as we go it's one of the perks another rule if neither of us has a choice we also just flip the coin <laughs> oh interesting <laughs> wow because yeah that might come really into tough. play you know i i think fuck every time your brain starts to give you an answer the rest of you is like no wait um i think if I'm just going with, fuck. Yeah, I think Moonlight by a hair. I think Moonlight is the, god damn it. It's really, really hard. I think Moonlight. I'm trying to feel like, I'm trying to think back to like how I felt when I All saw right. the movie. I'll put it like this. Ex Machina made me think a lot. And I, after the movie, I sat around and I thought a lot. And I still think about that movie. Moonlight hit me in the heart and like in the gut and it like went in deep inside and I still feel feelings, you know, more. So it's like, do you go with your head or your heart? I'm an INFP. The F in that stands for feelings. I would probably give it to Moonlight. Too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That it, was that's, really hard. That, wow. That, that moved the needle just a touch for me. Um, I'll also just kind of ding X Machina a touch just since, uh, um, like you said before, uh, borrowed a lot of ideas from iRobot. So yeah, almost um, without iRobot, there's no Xbox. There's no yeah. Xbox. Yeah. <laughs> so I could use, I could have used more uh, Oscar Isaac and sweatpants dancing. You know, we only got one yeah. of those scenes. If you give me two, it's a, you know it's a whole different story. So next we got Lady Bird versus Swiss Army Man. Fuck my life. This is even harder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a similar situation but fuck this one's really tough because uh um there's two like musical cues in this one that really uh that hit home with you hit home with yeah. me like the the high school dance with the bone thugs and harmony in the background uh man that's you were like did i did i make this movie? <laughs> yeah like that <laughs> Yeah. I, I literally like you. I had to like I had to look at my phone I'm like oh yeah it's like gosh dang like Greta Gerwig and I we're about the same age like that actually <laughs> makes like a ton of sense yeah. like um and we're probably we would probably be really great friends oh yeah Greta's out there that's another yeah you want to come on the pod yeah please please uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know maybe we can you know work something out yeah I'm pretty busy but you know if you want to hit it. just hit us up on Twitter yeah, yeah. DM, DM though, and we'll uh, we'll try to find a time. Swiss Army Man, uh, I'll, I'll give it, I'll give it credit here. Original, yes. Score, uh, is it just called Montage? The song is called Montage. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The popcorn. Pop, you call it popcorn. Yeah, popcorn song. Pop, popcorn, pop, popcorn, pop, popcorn, pop, popcorn, pop, popcorn. Yeah, we oh. could do the whole thing. 
I will. I'll. I'll. I'll show my hand. I'm. I'm gonna. My vote is Swiss Army Man. Um, just because. Personally, I love the movie, and I fucking bought the vinyl. You know, I have it, and the score sure. is. You gotta ride for it. I do, and it. Uh, it's. Uh, I put in the money, so I have to do it. But the score is is incredible. It's it's super. It's one. It's just super original, super interesting, and weird and funny and heartfelt. And uh, you know, Lady Bird is is great, and it is relatable. And I think it's more of a traditional art house A twenty four movie, whereas Swiss Army Man is something that I'm gonna just go out on a limb and say we're never gonna see again. You know, it kind of reminded me. Well, not well. I shouldn't say that. I'm not gonna say it. Never mind. Don't. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, this would be like an interesting debate to have, like in you know five years, um, because Which like one holds up. Yeah, definitely. Because I I think I've seen. I know I've seen Swiss Army Man at least twice. Um, I haven't seen Lady Bird since it came out. Since I saw it in theaters. Yeah. Um, so I'd be really interested to at least like watch Lady Bird again and just kind of like go through that again and That's see true, yeah. if it. Because I've only seen it once too. Yeah. If like if there was if it, if it's like one of those movies where like oh yeah it's like you know like you you kind of pick up different things like as you move along. Yeah, and if it, if you like feel those feelings as deeply again, right? The second time. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna have to go to the coin for this one. So I'm going Lady Bird. Okay. So wait, uh, which one is which? The bird side, tails is Lady Bird. Head Swiss is Army the man, man size man. Man. man head. So he's got a man yeah. head. Here we go. Call it in the air. Oh, no wait, we don't have calling. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Bird. <laughs> yes, I win. You suck. Well, that's all the time we have, folks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great having you. Uh, all right. So, Lady Bird. Lady Bird moves on. All right, fine. I'm not... Okay. So now we have Room versus The Witch. This is a weird matchup. This is a... Uh, uh, <laughs> this is really hard to... to <laughs> this is a tonal matchup that's uh, this is very... Like, literally... Almost black and white matchup yeah. here. I mean, so, yeah, boy, definitely a, a different. Is hard uh, to compare these movies. This would be an interesting movie night for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, uh, I mean, you want to feel next? Which one uh, do you start with? Which one do you end with? Right, that's yeah. the real question. It's like, oh wow, that was a great. Movie. I mean, I feel like, like you'd want to start you with the watch witch. The wit ne- witch next? Like, yeah, uh, I feel like you got to start with the witch, and then the room brings you out of it. Yeah. Um. Um, I'll just say I'm, I'm a witch t- here. Witch too. Witch. Yep. Yeah. Sorry, room, but you just, you just don't have goodbye. To, you just don't goodbye, have light. <laughs> yeah, we're turning out the lights. Yeah. All right. So now we have good time versus under the skin. Good times. Another one where I'd be interested to see how it holds up. Yeah. Um. You seen know, it twice. I've no. seen, seen it twice. I think too. And, uh, you know, Under the Skin is great, and I don't think it gets enough recognition, um, but I've also only seen it once. I know I really liked it. I've seen it a couple times. Uh, one time, was the first time I saw it, which I kind of kicked myself, it was, like, through a crappy stream on, mm-hmm. like, my laptop, like, yeah. a long time ago. And then I saw it, like, actually on, like a like, a TV, like, big TV, and, like, sound and it was loud yeah. and you get like immersed by the soundtrack and everything mm-hmm. and i wish i that that was like my first experience with it um i actually kind of go against the grain a little bit with this like i i think it's a little overrated Interesting. now like i don't like i definitely think it it benefits from the fact that it's like in this like internet age where it's like it's like you google like underrated sci-fi movies or and it's like it's like I bet you haven't seen this movie. You know, it's like always like the top of the list yeah. kind of thing. Um, not to like take anything away from it. Uh, it definitely, uh, when this movie came out, Scarlett Johansson was having a moment. Oh yeah. Like a big moment. Like yep. it was, it was up there with the McConaughey, the McConaughey Yeah. As far as like just banger after banger after banger. 
And uh, yeah, I appreciate it, but I am going to go with good time. You know, I think Under the Skin could be one that holds up over time, but I'm also going to go with good time. Good time. Because it was a good time. But again, I'd like to see how that uh, holds up. So, that means we have... Fuck my stupid face. We have Moonlight vs. Lady Bird up next. Interesting. Speaking of A24, the first These episode of A24 the A24 movies. movies. That's, that was the connection. The A24 <laughs> now has a podcast, yeah. and which they might have stole our logo. We're not sure. We're looking into it. Yeah. A24, and they had the directors of Lady Bird and Moonlight, Barry Jenkins. Barry Jenkins and Greta Gerwig, mm-hmm. on for their first episode, and they talked about both of their movies. And now we're putting them head-to-head here. And it's interesting. I... This one's tough. I don't know. And you're just spiteful right now, because it's just like... Yeah. I don't even care. <laughs> <laughs> I hate the most. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this... I mean, if it was Swiss Army Man, and Moonlight would be, you know, but at the same time, I'm just thinking back to like, I feel like this is like purple versus pink for some reason in my head. Like Moonlight's purple, you know, and Lady Bird's yeah. pink. And uh, I'm a Vikings fan. I'm <laughs> such a stupid freak. Yeah, no, I just no. think, Correlation, you know, <laughs> I feel like Moonlight is a little bit, um, it's a little bit more introspective and it's a little more, on a human, like a more like base level, and and Lady Bird is a little bit. Again, like it, there's a tonal difference. It's it's again like a two movies about people like trying to be their best self, but not really sure how to get. And to people that, point. that you and I probably don't have any business relating to, but we relate again, to both of them. Yeah, correct. Yeah, and. <sighs> Um, this is Sacramento versus Miami? Yes, correct. I would say, yeah, Miami area. Somewhere in there. Uh, Moonlight. Go on Moonlight. It's on you. That's the... These are both that I've only seen once, too. I think I've, I think I've figured out how to do these. I just say mine first and then leave it up to you. <laughs> <laughs> that is easier for you. Um... I'm really, really pushing here. Um, You know, fuck, man. You know, Lady Bird, I walked out of it feeling joyful, and I felt like, but I also kind of felt, it's weird that, like, Lady Bird brought out an emotion that I don't think I'd felt since when it was done it felt like the feeling you had after you like graduated high school and you're like starting your first semester of college you know it kind of like all of a sudden I felt that same emotion and you're like whoa like I didn't realize like that emotion was gonna come back up like I I I got up out of the theater and I took all the cash out of my wallet and I just left it on the seat and I'm just like I don't really believe in money I'm been Bartering, <laughs> so we're gonna barter system. <laughs> what a douche! <laughs> like, that is a fucking dude. Oh, that gosh, her gross. first boyfriend was interesting. Lucas Hedges of having fucking. And that was an interesting predicament yeah. that she got in. Um, Another very genuine surprise. Yeah, I was like, uh, oh. "Whoa, okay." I didn't think we were going there, but all right, yeah. cool. Um, oh, shoot, but I just feel like movies. I feel like I probably. I feel like Moonlight had a harder, had a steeper hill to climb with me, and I feel like it it got there. So I think I think Moonlight, because I think I probably had a harder time relating to Moonlight than did Lady Bird, and it it got there. So that was a tough one. Now we have Good Time versus The Witch. Another just weird matchup. <laughs> <laughs> Anything versus The Witch is. Just like is... they're intimidated, they're looking <laughs> down the barrel. I mean, that's like playing the the Raiders in the seventies. You know, it was kind of like I feel like this team isn't that good, but I don't want to play them. You know, yeah. like you know, George yeah. Atkinson is gonna hit you going over the middle, really in the head, stinky, just stinky, gross. stinky cheese. Like, yeah, what do, you, what do you pair with it? I don't know. <laughs> what movie do you want to watch next? <laughs> it's true. 
You know what, man? I fucking... I loved Good Time, but... The Witch has stood the test the of time. For me, as well. For me. I mean, maybe in a couple of years we'll see, but... Yeah. The Witch... Fuck, man. And again, yeah, it, it might be different if I, I... I haven't seen a better horror movie since... Not, and I love the genre. I, I do too. I think we're both big horror movie fans, and we love shitty horror movies too. Um, it, I haven't seen as complete a horror movie as that. Like, yeah. I've definitely seen some that have these great moments, but they like have a shitty whatever. But the witch all the way through is is stinky cheese. So now for the finals, we have Moonlight versus the Witch. Just such ridiculous matchups. Like, you know, Moonlight Ladybird, that's like a Duke UNC matchup, but I don't even know what this is like. I mean, is this like Moon is this like, you know, UNC and fucking like Florida Gulf Coast? Is it uh I don't even know. Is it uh, I'm trying to think, UNC like, men's versus the Yukon women? No, no. Like I'm trying to think of like if I if I were to truly watch these two movies back to back, what one would I like better? You know? That's, like having that's not seen funny, these, man. um Walking away from it. Yeah, I just been like, Okay, I'm seeing two new movies today and I s and I watch Moonlight and then I watch The Witch or I watch The Witch and then I watch Moonlight. Like what <laughs> <laughs> That's a, two totally different experiences. Yeah. yeah, I I might need like a like a, like a smoke break in between, <laughs> like a, but <laughs> a sorbet. Uh, but uh, oh, man. this is tough. But you know, it's just I think I think it's the witch, dude. I think so too. And the thing is, is that. The Witch is just a really hard matchup. Because all, like, all these are great movies, but you put it up against The Witch, and it's like, fuck, man. There's also, like, that kind of, uh, there's, I guess there, there a first life, which is, like, you know, the theater run, the second life, the DVD run, and then, like, now what we have now is, like, a, a third life, which is, like, kind of like the memes. Yeah, it, you know? stuck, it sticks in your craw. Like... It, you, I don't know what was it like. Like a couple months ago, you send me that like spooky picture of all the girls dancing around like the goat, and I'm yeah. like, I'm and, like, where did that come from? Yeah. Like, and you're like, please oh. delete that. Yeah, I'm and like, said, it, there was that so, girl. I met, I matched with that girl on Tinder, and her profile picture was her kneeling next to a, a black goat, and you said, oh yeah, that's avoid at all costs. Yeah, that's a. <laughs> you said unmatch immediately. Yeah, I would I like. Did. I I did. I didn't. I was like, oh shit, and immediately because you're not messing with that. That's like the point in the movie where you like you pick up and you move back to Sioux Falls. You're yep. Like, like, <laughs> like yeah, you know, I'm back. It's been real, but yeah, we'll figure it out. Yep. Like <laughs> I'm done. Uh, you know, yeah. it's so, the witch. It's the witch. Honestly, um, I would. I don't know how much like sway like the. Uh, Black Phillip IRL has over me. Like, I could just be, like, a conduit talking right now for him. Like, you know. That's a real possibility. Like... <laughs> well, that, that was a creepy thing. So, I mean, you know, it's just that it comes down to the witch is just fucking hard to match up against. You know, like, it is just, it's so complete. And it's, it fucking soaks in, man. And you're right, it is on that third run of, like, it's gone through the initial us seeing in the theater, and it's gone through the DVD run, and now it's, like, just stuck in our consciousness. And, like, you know, is is Good Time going to do that? I don't know. I, I don't know. It didn't have as visceral of an effect on me. Is Moonlight going to be like that? I don't know. I feel like Swiss Army Man is one that will kind of stay with me, but, like, I don't know. Got bounced. Bounced early. Bounced. I'm still <laughs> salty. <laughs> but it's just, the witch is just, you know, and look guys, we said it before, we've talked about the, we probably talked about the witch more than any other movie on this list and, yeah. or on, on, of any movie ever on the podcast. And, uh, it's, uh. It's a fitting winner. I think it is too. It's one where, 
And the A24, like we said when we did, you know what, you guys, go back and listen to our all of our podcasts. You know, I don't know how much time you have, but really listen to all of them. But we did a whole episode on A24, and we talked about some of their other movies. And, uh, you know, we've talked about The Witch before, but it's just... That might have been the movie that kind of spurred us to, like... I feel like it probably was, because we were kind of like... We were kind of like... Because A24... That's not that logo that keeps popping yeah, up in front, in front of, of, of all these movies like, that we like. You're like, son of a bitch. That's yeah. our logo. Like. Yeah. <laughs> and now that's just what we like. It's just, and we can't say enough how big of fans we are of A24, but it's just, I think we said it on that episode, we're like, there's, these are such different movies on this list. I mean, they're varying from A to Z. Yeah, and then, that's not to say that this, you know, like we the, can do a top. The list ends at you know these sixteen. It's just oh yeah, hundred um, percent. There's a couple on there that you know maybe could deserve some consideration, but yeah, I, I don't know it. Yeah, like I said, not all great. Like you know, I kind of like Sea of Trees. Other people thought otherwise. I think you might be the only one. <laughs> <laughs> no world. Some people call it the tail end of the Renaissance. <laughs> I'm like, hold on. You're like, we're just starting. Yeah, that baby's rising. <laughs> uh, so, uh, any last thoughts? I, I mean, A24 is great, and the witch. Look, man, if you, if you want a horror movie that will fucking stick with you, and, and you know, like. Honestly, like, a dark song, like, the first viewing of that was like, holy fuck, this is really getting in there. And I did watch it by myself the other night here at the house, and uh, I did it, and, Just you know, giving it a shot. You know, I made made through the whole thing. Uh, it, was, it wasn't easy, but I'll tell you what, I fucking haven't watched The Witch here by myself, <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, uh, I will eventually, but gonna be at like two o'clock in the afternoon yep sun shining (laughs) all the windows are the blinds are up they're not drawn yeah i have all my doors locked it's just i don't know i'm happy with it you happy with it i'm happy with it if you're happy with it happy with it i think we're both happy with it well hey guys thanks for listening to this episode again check out all these movies definitely check out the witch check me out on twitter at luke larson 89 you can find us on twitter for this podcast at a elsewhere not a 24 at elsewhere podcast on on twitter on facebook soundcloud youtube whatevs um and uh that's it coming up next week uh brie larson's gonna be on the pod yeah yeah definitely